Okay, hello again. Ryan Carcass is Global War 36 to 45. Uh, we are just doing the turn summary for July 1943. We've had a few things happen, but first let's wander over to the tech here. Let's switch hands. All right. Um, can't remember if, uh, if the Russians got these this turn. They did move forward these ones, I do believe. So probably last turn they got those. Uh, the Americans did finish long range and strategic rockets. So they just need to get one more on that. And then they get that victory point. Uh, the Italians completed shipyards and the French, I think the British completed, completed wartime economy. Americans are in a war and they've taken over a place. So they're a buck up. Let's see what else happened. Vichy's still in existence. French are down to three. Possibly down to less soon. Or up to more. Who knows? Depends on what happens. Australia, no change. Um, FEC, they went from 14 to 11. They lost three bucks worth of territory. Uh, let's see what else happened. Netherlands, no change. They're still neutral. Uh, Italy went up a buck from the British in Africa. The British went down a buck or two. They've been up and down the British all turn. I can't remember exactly where they started. The Germans knocked them down and they knocked themselves back up and then the Italians knocked them down. Um, Japan has uh, declared war on uh, British and French, which brought everybody else into the war. The Americans were the, actually the last ones to come. And Russia is still neutral as well with all the majors. So we'll see what happens. All right. Oh, where do we start? Where do we start? Let's start up here. Germany, Russia, no change. As you can see, nothing really happened there. All right. This is different. Uh, actually, it looks about the same as it did last turn, but it's different. Uh, okay. The Germans took out a blocker over here. And the Germans had amphibiously assaulted and taken out Liverpool. And I inappropriately placed these units for Germany over there. They should actually be over here in C-Zone. Uh, I can't remember what that one is. 10? 13. Yeah, I put them in 11. Apparently, they need to be connected by rail to the major country. Which means that Britain can only place units here at these shipyards and when I placed one in uh, Africa that was a failure on my part. South Africa should not have placed a destroyer, it should have been placed at the home country. All right, um, and oh the Dutch too, I should have placed the ship over here instead of in the, in the Dutch East Indies. Uh, what else did we have happen? Oh, uh, yeah, the Germans took their Navy out of here and they hit the British Navy that was there and lost abysmally. Uh, they did manage to damage that one battleship, but those uh, ships moved up here on the uh, British turn for a combined amphibious and land assault on Liverpool, and they were rather successful. They still have five infantry and an artillery left. All right, um, what else happened? Thinking, thinking, thinking. Oh yeah, the British repaired their uh, factory a little bit so that they could build four units. And at the same time, they uh, delivered uh, four units via the transport from, from Canada. All right, um, now that the Americans are in the war, they've, uh, I should really get a fleet card for this, but uh, they non-combated from season 43 and 30 into, I can't even read that one, 22. Everything's in there together. I notice my planes are falling off the carriers and all sorts of, it's a big mess, but there's uh, three battleships, two carriers, and uh, uh, what is it, an Iowa-class battleship uh, with, I think, three cruisers, th four destroyers, and three loaded transports, and a commander for the transports, and a commander for the dude uh, for the navy. All right. Um, 
Yeah, I can see all three convoys here. The British got hit pretty hard. The Germans took out five here. The Germans and Italians took out six there. And then the uh, Italians took out another three here. So we're at 14, I believe. Yeah, 14. 14 losses to the uh, British from convoys there. Um, now, I'm just working my way across the map here. So Over here, we had a fairly substantial stack of Italians, or of uh, British. The Italians brought in their, their land units from Egypt, along with a motorized and two fighters and two tacticals from Cairo. And they kicked that spot, so... Africa's not looking too good for the British anymore. They could build units down here. I don't know why though If Italy's busy down there, I mean they're gonna take a couple bucks, but it was really the only thing that the British are gonna lose is one two three four and Possibly they might take that Belgian place total of five increased but um, Sorry, that's uh, that's a little bit better I guess they could wander through here and take that Gold Coast place, but that's a long trek for a buck. We'll see. Um, uh, well, Japan pulled the trigger. There's not much else I need to say about that here, I guess. Um, <clears throat> at first, I was going to just surprise strike Burma, but when I realized that I could hit the British fleet that was over here, I did that instead. These are the survivors. Everything higher than a destroyer for the for the Japanese survived. No hits taken. Um, yeah, for the Japanese here, then they attacked Burma as well. They had a stack of four tanks, four mechs, and a handful of infantry. And if I didn't take that out, they were just going to start walking into the Yunnan and spreading like a disease through China. And I would be fighting for China all over again. Um, we also took out Hanoi, but we didn't have enough troops to take out Saigon and Hanoi at the same time. So the French built a colonial down here again, like a bunch of friendly people. Um, so the British have two fighters, a tactical, two, two, two artillery and nine, 10, 15 infantry in there. So if Japan wants to get on that, they might want to get into that pile up there pretty soon. Uh, yeah, it's not looking the greatest otherwise. We'll see. We'll see. Um, Japanese, though, when they brought all their infant or their fleet forward to attack that. Yeah, let's lift that up a little bit. When they brought all of the fleet forward to attack that, they uh, ran away with their transports from here to there. And uh, these guys have moved in as like blockers so that the fleet can't move past. You know, that's one of those rules. I just still don't understand how one destroyer like that there can block either the entire British or the or the, the American fleet. Like, you should be able to split them up. Like if, when you do an amphibious assault, you can fight the fleet and land. I'd split your fleet in half, you know, if you beat this guy with your, with your, I don't know what you call it. We'll see. You do your fleet battle, and then the survivors win a will fight. Or if you win that, then you can fight on, or maybe you make it so you can move on. I don't know. It's one of those silly rules, even in the Axis and Allies, where it was just ridiculous how you know you could spread out a wall of destroyers and block the American fleet or the Japanese fleet from coming at you. <sighs> All right. Um, other than that, not too much happened. The Australians have uh, kind of turtled down here. They built a couple. Uh, what did they build? I don't think they built a destroyer. Or no, they built a sub and a dude. They moved a couple of dudes onto New Zealand so it would be a little harder to take. Japan doesn't seem to be in a position to take it, but I mean, if you were being paranoid, you'd probably do this while you have a chance. Um. I don't know what Japan's going to do. They could come into Malay, but it's got a fort. Or they could go to Burma, uh, from Burma to Bengal. 
there's no transports around here, not even any destroyers either, so they can't scoop any of this stuff up. <clears throat> and with that row that I had wrong there, I can't even build ships here for the Japanese because they're not connected by rail to the home country. So, yeah, I can only build ships in Japan now, which is kind of brutal because I was planning on building some ships down here in the sea zone at that port by the factory. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we might have to house rule that. I kind of had it house ruled without even realizing I had it house ruled. Oh, and of course, Japan, just, they just gained themselves three brand new commanders. So, at war with the French, British, and the U.S. And the U.S. got themselves a bunch of commanders. And I think the, Jap uh, the Japanese declaring war on the British also gave, you know, the uh, Germans also counter-declared on America. Or the U.S., which is why the Germans and the Italians both got an extra commander as well. And, of course, the British got a commander. And I figured, you know what, the most useful use of a British commander might now might be over here. The FVC already has one. Kind of see that gold dude there. His hat kind of blends in, though. And then, no, uh, these guys got one. And we got a, one or two up here. Two. We got one with a fleet. And we got one uh, in Liverpool. So yeah, Britain's got their commanders where they need to be. Anyway, these commanders are kind of making a difference. Oh, Russia. This fleet here is now located in Sea Zone 122, along with three transports with four Marines. No, no, three Marines, um, two infantry, and a tank. And they have also one more Marine here and a transport, and maybe something also gets scooped up with that destroyer. All right, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, Russia looks like it's probably keying up for the Dutch, but it all depends on what the Japanese do first. Um, it might be a good idea for the for the Russians to go in at this stuff here. They can reach a lot of it. Oh, they took away the wrong tank. They should have been able to blitz. Man, I didn't plan that out right. Anyway. <laughs> These light tanks can't blitz. Uh, oh, well. Now they can take this port and whatever in Bombay. They can take the Punjab. They're still out of range of this stuff. Yeah, just creep in while the Japanese are creeping in. And then, uh, you know, maybe take advantage of the Japanese if they start winning too much. Lose too many troops. Yeah, Russia's in a good spot. It's also got a bunch of troops up here. There we go, right about there, yeah. It's got a bunch of troops up here and scattered around. Way more than the Japanese, they just got these guys here. The CCP is doing pretty good, and the KMT have been eliminated. So I took their commander off the board. Um, said it was an American commander. We tried doing a defense role, and he could run away, but he could not reach. The only American place that was in reach was here. It was one too many spaces away, so... No hopes. Ah, well. Live and learn. All right. Oh, yeah. They took Hong Kong as well. It's the uh, same reason you didn't want that one dude running around. All right. And um, the only other thing that happened is these light fleet carriers that the Japanese had on the board with the American uh, roundels on them. They've been removed. They're roundels, and these can now be moved. The one that was here was uh, placed. These two were not purchased to move forward, but they uh, can be. Let's see what Japan does with that. Um, yeah, oh, and the Italians moved this forward. They're just trying to make sure that they have enough capital ships in the med to get that point in case they lose Gibraltar or Cairo. Either one's possible. All right, so that is the summary video for July 1943. We only have four turns left. The next turn is January 44.